Okay, let's start with day two, question six. <clears throat> okay, so a video game system normally sells for 249 and it's on sale for 15% off. Which expression can be used to find the amount of the discount? Well, what you first want to do, since it's 15% off, you want to multiply this percent by that number. But you can't multiply percent in this form. You have to turn it to a decimal first. 15 turns to a decimal, moving the decimal twice to the left. Now, <clears throat> you need to multiply this original number by this decimal to begin starting the process. This, your options here doesn't give you the final answer, it just starts you the process. Now, it's not A because 0 0.15, you, need, you cannot move a decimal to the, with the 249. It has to be the complete 249. This says 2.49, making it not true. 0 0.15 times 249, that works. It's not a whole number. Turn that to a decimal. 3 over 20 is equivalent to 1 over 100 times 5 times 5 makes this 15 over 100 which is 15%, but as 15%, you know that this is a decimal, making that one true. And 15 over 100 is the same as this, over multiply, which if you turn that to a decimal, it turns to 0 0.15 times 249. Okay, let's move to the next day. Tell whether each is a unit rate. Unit rate means what? Divide, okay? Meaning you always have to have a denominator of one. Okay, now per one, so it should say per one. Words like for every means divide. Per divide, per divide. This line right here, divide, divide, and divide. Okay, all of them are in, in methods of dividing. But since it's unit rate, you have to have a denominator of one. Eight dogs for five cats, five is not a denominator of one, making this one not true. $1.25 per song, it didn't say songs, so this means one song cost me that much, making this a unit rate. One third lap per minute, one minute, that makes this true. This 60 over two, this is not a unit rate, but I can simplify it by two, making it 30 over one. However, this is not what they gave me here, making this one not true. 15 players per team, one is your denominator, making this one true. Per two batches, had it said one batch, it would have made that one true. So my answer choice becomes B, C, and E. Trey can drive his car 130 miles on four gallons of gas. Okay, so this one's gonna take a little bit of work. Circle true or false for each statement. <clears throat> At this rate, Trey could drive 195 miles on six gallons. All right, so for the first one, knowing that he does 130 miles for four, gallon, for four gallons, we need to figure out how much he does per one gallon. So I'm going to cross multiply. Four times X is equivalent to 130 times um, one, divide by four on both sides. X is equivalent to, I'm going to come to the side right here and divide. Sorry, goes there twice. Decimal, decimal, zero, 32.5. So he does 32, <clears throat> he does 32.5. Um, miles per gallon. Okay, so at this rate, he could drive 195 miles in six gallons. Okay, so knowing that he does 32.5 miles in one gallon, I need to multiply six times this to, to tell me if it's the same, times 32.5 to tell me if, if it's the same as 195. 195 times 
32.5. Okay, remember, you can't use a calculator on FSA, so don't use a calculator on here. Just like I'm working this out, spending the time, you do the same thing. 5 and 9. Okay, so I'm going to cross those out. That's 0, 1, 18, 19, 2, 3, double holder. 15, 1, 27, 28. 3, 4, 5. Add them up. 5, 7. 18 plus 5 is 23. 8, 10, 13, 6. Any decimals? Yes. I feel like I multiplied wrong somewhere. Hmm. Let me do it again. 1, 9, 5 times 32.5. Five, twenty-five, forty-five, forty-seven. <clears throat> five and nine, older. Okay, ten, eighteen, nineteen, two, three, double older. Fifteen, twenty-seven, twenty-eight. Three, four, five. Add them up. Five, seven, eighteen, twenty-three, ten, thirteen, six. One whole decimal. Huh. Is that true? No. Um. Actually, let me double check. I did something wrong. Four into 130, four times three is 12, it's 10, it's two, it's eight, it's two, it's a decimal, it's a zero, it's 32.5. Hmm, what am I doing wrong? Let's divide this into here and see if that works. 6 into 19, 195, 3 makes it 18. It was in there twice. Oh, I'm so sorry, y'all. Teachers make mistakes too. <laughs> Decimal, 0, 5. So all I simply had to do was divide 6 into 95, 195. I am so sorry. This is true. Okay. At this rate, Trey would need 5 gallons of gas to drive six, 165 miles per hour. Um, 5 gallons of gas, well, you needed to multiply. You need to multiply. One, ga one gallon gives me 32.5 miles. Multiply that by 5. 25, 10, 12, 15, 16. Move the decimal over once. 5 gallons only gives me 162.5 miles, making this one false. Okay, at this rate, if gas costs this much per gallon, $3.45 per gallon, it will cost Trey this much to drive 260 miles. Okay. Well, let's divide 32.5 into 260. Since I have a decimal outside, I'm going to move the decimal over, make it a whole number, but I have to do the same in here, put it up, and then put it up. Move the decimal, since the decimal is over here, move it up. Give yourself another one. Since you did it outside, you have to do it inside. Move it over. Now, 325 cannot go into 260. Not 2, not 6, nor 260. But I know that it can go into, three, to, into um, 20, 2,600. So 325 times, let's take a guess. I'm not going to guess by 10. Let's start with 8. 40. 16, 
Um, I think I made a good guess here. 16, 20, 24. 20. Oh, I did a perfect guess, actually. So this this represent this eight represents how many um, gallons of gas he bought. Well, if he bought eight dollar eight gallons of gas, and each gallon costs me three dollars forty eight cents, I need to multiply three dollars and forty forty five cents times eight, and see if it gives me this much. So three point forty five times eight zero thirty two thirty six. 24 to 26. That's supposed to be a 3. See what happens when I rush it. 345 times 8. 40, 32 plus 4 is 36. 24 plus 3 is 27. That's my decimal in the wrong spot. Move the decimal over twice, 2760, which is exactly what he played here, making this a, tr a true statement. Okay, next one. <clears throat> if four gallons of milk costs $16.76, how much would seven gallons of milk cost? First, divide 4 into 16.76 to determine how much it is for one gallon. Or you can set up a ratio, 4 gallons cost me 16.76 is equal to 7 gallons over x. <clears throat> Multiply 16.76 times 7 is 42. 49 plus 4 is 53. Yes, 53. 42 plus 5 is 47. 7 plus 4 is 11. Two holders. So I have 4x is equal to 117.32. Divide by 4 on both sides. So divide. 4 into 117.32, put your decimal up, goes in there twice, making it 8, 37, making it 9, it's 36, 1, 4 can't go into 1, bring down your 3, 4 into 12, 3, 13 is 3 times, making it 12, Subtract 1, bring down your 2, 4 into 12, 33. So how much is it costing for <clears throat> 7 gallons? $29.33. Okay, Reggie, Elvin, and Jose are member of a relay running race. Reggie finished his leg race 2.45 seconds faster than Elvin. So you have Reggie is faster than Elvin. So you have Elvin, then Elvin, Reggie finished first, then it was Alvin, according to what it says here. And But then Reggie was also 3.86 seconds slower than Jose. So if it's Jose, so the first person here then was Jose, Reggie, he was first, he was second, and he was third. Okay, if Reggie's time for his leg race was 5.15, so we know that Reggie's is 57.12. What's the total time for the team? Well, Reggie had finished his leg raise faster than, so many seconds faster than Alvin. So you have to subtract this, or no, you have to add this number to Reggie's to determine Alvin's speed. So you have 57.12 plus 2.45. Seven five nine five. So Alvin did it in fifty nine point fifty seven seconds. Now he was this much slower than 
cosine. So you, since we added it here, because he had more time, it took him longer to do it, we have to subtract 3.81 from 57.12 to give us Jose's time. So 57.12 minus 3.81, 2 minus 1 is 1, 11 minus 8 is 3, 6 minus 3 is 3, so I have 53.31. Add them up, gives me the total time of the race, which is 170 seconds. Okay, next one over here. You have to tell whether each situation can be represented by a negative number, zero, or positive. A football player's team first plays resulted in a loss, if it's a loss, it's a negative number, since it's a loss. A store marks up a price. The price went up, so it's a positive number. Nina withdrew. Withdraw means to take away, meaning it's a negative. Purpose swimming at sea level. We discussed that at sea level is at zero, ground zero. And then Kylie scored two goals in yesterday's game. She scored. It's a positive. She didn't lose. She didn't gain. I mean, she didn't lose anything. She scored goals. All right, let's move on to the next one. Okay, so with this one, in questions 12 through 16, select whether each statement is true or false. Well, since it's discussed, it's talking to you about order of pairs. Quickly, let's quickly review. Here's your quadrant. You have your y-axis. You have your x-axis. You have your origin. Quadrant one goes, and then they go backwards. One, two, three, four. Okay. The order pair, oh, and then an order pair is always x, y. Okay. Always x first. Always. Now, the order pair 2, positive 2, then negative 5 means I have to go right to down 5.2. So from 0, if I go right and down, I ended up in quadrant 4. Is that true? Yes. That makes this statement true. All right. So you could have either put a... You could have put the letter A or you could have put, just put the words true. All right, <clears throat> quadrant two, so this quadrant here, contains ordered pairs of the form a positive and then a negative. Well, if, I, if, if this is a number line and I'm moving left on my number line, I'm moving in the negative direction. So the first order pair here should be negative, then since I went up, it's negative then positive. So negative and then up. It should have been a negative and then a positive number. So this statement is false. The point negative 6, 0. Negative 6, 0, meaning I didn't go up or down at all, makes this, it says here, it's on the y-axis. Well, if I didn't go up and up at all and I ended right here, this, ladies and gentlemen, is called your x-axis, making this one false. The origin, origin is located in quadrant 1. Well, no, origin is part of all four quadrants. It's not just in, in one specific quadrant. Smack dab in the middle with an ordered pair of zero, zero. To plot the points in quadrant three, move left and down. True, very true. Okay, several tourists are participating in different activities at an ocean resort. The table below shows each person's position to sea level. Plot the points on the number line to represent each person's elevation. Okay, 0 0.5 feet above. So if I start at 0, here's 1 halfway between a 0 0.5. So I'm going to go K for kayaking. Swimming at sea level. I can write sea level because there's two swimmings. 8 feet above. Kite. Um, 1.5 feet below, so from 0, 1, and then 0.5. Swimming. And 7 feet below. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, <clears throat> now, I'm going to show you this one because I believe that we've discussed this one in class. 
I'm gonna, and you can pause the video if you want to, to look at all the different options of doing this, but I'm going to explain to you your best way in, in solving this problem. Which of the following values will result in a quotient that is less than 1 when it's divided by 1 half? So you're dividing fractions here. Remember, keep change flip or multiply by the reciprocal. Now, I, I went specifically over this with you guys. Don't try to multiply a mixed number with an, a regular fraction. Turn this mixed number to an improper fraction, and that's what you can see what I did over here. 4 times 2 is 8 plus 1 made it 9 over 4 times 2 over 1 because, let me move over here, 9 over 4 divided by 1 half, if I follow the keep change flip rule, 9 over 4 times 2 over 1. That's where I got the 2 over 9 times, well, 9 over 4 times 2 over 1. This became a 1. 9 times 1 is 9 because I cross simplified, by the way. 2 can go to 2 once and 2 can go to 4 twice. 9 times 1 is 9. 2 times 1 is 2. 9 over 2 is 4 and a half. That is not less than 1, making A not true. Okay? So instead of looking at, if you haven't done this one already, don't just look at the answer choices and look at the way here. Try it. Go off of what I did for you first with that first one. Try the rest of them yourself and then check your results. Okay. For questions... 19 to 22, match each rational number to the pair of integers that lies that it lies between on the number line. If you don't, if you're not 100% sure, draw yourself a number line. <clears throat> I have zero. Since this, I have one, two, three, one, two, three, negative one, negative two, negative three, two and three. Okay, let's start with the easy ones that we know. Two. 0.5 means it's between 2 and 3. Between 2 and 3, making this one A. Negative 2. So if I go negative 2 and then a little bit more, I know that negative 2 and 5, 6 is going to fall in between this area right here. So that is, that's between negative 2 and negative 3. Negative 2 and negative 3, making this one C. All right, let's divide. 3 with one left over, three and one third. So my whole number is three, right? So I have to go to three plus a little bit more, falls in between three and, three and four, making my answer choice B. And I, of course you can see, all right, well, negative three right here, plus 0 0.01 makes my point right about here. That means this number falls between negative three and negative four. I'm going to stop and, and then move on to day.